Hey, so November is Abuse Awareness Month. And we thought how important of a topic to talk about financial abuse, especially for women. So on the blog right now, jessicaweaver.com, you're gonna see multiple stories of how women in our, on our team and our community have been abused financially, how they got through it, and what are the important ways to protect yourself right now with abuse. And I want to share with you my family's personal story of financial abuse, and it was my grandmother, my mom's mom, who went through this journey, we'll call it, with her second husband. So my grandmother and grandfather got divorced when my mom was only four years old. And my mom, back then, she remembers being in court and the judge asking her in front of both of her parents, who do you want to live with? Could you imagine the pressure on a four-year-old upsetting her parents? And she defaulted to, I want to live with both of them. So my grandmother ended up marrying a lawyer in DC and my mother knew him from a very early age. They started dating when she was, you know, eight, eight or nine years old. So she's known him her entire life, entire adult life. Now we'll call him Fred. And I talk about this in my second, my first book, Strong Woman, Stronger Assets. Fred lived in DC and my grandmother who had two TV shows in the DC area, Claire and Coco was a children's TV show, and then Woman Talk was a woman's talk show. Yes, she had Sonny and Cher on her show. She was a big celebrity in the area. She retired and moved down to the Outer Banks and then later on to Amelia Island in Florida. So they were old Fred up in D.C., my grandmother Claire down in Florida. They were only together a few times a year, and they were married about 35 years. 35 years. It worked for them, right? It worked for them until she hit the fan. So fast forward 35 years of a marriage like this, and my grandmother gets a call in the middle of the night from a hospital in DC. And the nurse said, does he do this often? And my grandmother goes, well, what do you mean? What is going on? She goes, well, he was dropped off here by his girlfriend and he's in pink negligee with, you know, pink fingernails and toenails. And he had a stroke and my, I mean, blindsided and in complete shock with multiple pieces of this story. One, he has a girlfriend. Two, he's a cross-dresser. Not that there's anything wrong with him. Cross-dresser. And he had a stroke. And the girlfriend dropped him off at the hospital saying, I'm not married to you. You're not my problem anymore. And actually that girlfriend called my grandmother and they started working together to put the pieces together. So my mother and my grandmother meet in DC and they stay at Linda B. Johnson's niece was Fred's secretary. So she's helping them out. And they come to find out that he has two mistresses. One he's been putting through college. Another one that he's been renting an apartment for her. He's bought the Mercedes He's bought them even down to the $3,000 handbag. I mean, they were living this very indulgent life. And all along, my friend, I used to call Pampa, which is, when I learned what he did to my grandmother is horrifying. Anyway, so Fred always said to my grandmother that he was going to AA conferences. And my grandmother even gave up drinking the 35 years in front of him. Well, we kind of knew he was always drinking because he would have a large glass of very syrupy looking water. He was drinking vodka right in front of us. And I remember playing with him on the beach and he went to catch a ball and he just right down. And he was so drunk he couldn't even stand to catch the ball went right down. So we kind of knew he, he's been drinking on and off the entire time. So it turns out they were cross-dressing conventions, not AA conventions, and he would go with his mistresses. So they had some very indulgent trips together as well. Where's he getting all this money from? To support his own apartment in DC, two other apartments, a college tuition, Mercedes. He, he's a lawyer, he's not making that much money. So he took three of my grandmother's properties and put them in his name and forged her signature. And then he took mortgages out on the properties. 
my grandmother, obviously, she had a lawyer up. Fred lawyered up. He, on his dime, on my, well, really my grandmother's dime, flew five attorneys down to Florida to deal with the divorce matters. They separated, and that was it. And then the day of her funeral, so to cry think about that. The day of her funeral, there's a phone call, and we're at my grandmother's house. She passed away, and I answer the phone, and it's Fred screaming at me. His granddaughter, he hasn't seen or spoke with in probably 15, 20 years, screaming at me. My mom gets off the phone, he's screaming at her, how dare you not tell me that Claire passed away. Another piece of the story is before shit hit the fan, Fred brings my grandmother on a cruise through the Mediterranean and we get a call that my grandmother is in a hospital in France. And my Fred tells my mom, blood's thicker than water, she's your problem now. He gets back on the cruise and comes home and we have to fly my grandmother who has a broken neck and is in the halo where the screws are into her skull, fly her home and she ends up staying with us for several months while she heals. Turns out Fred pushed her from behind right in one of the doors where there's a the lip on the bottom and she tripped over it and crashed into a, a table and broke her neck and he deserted her in France. So he tried to get rid of her before she found out all of these dealings because he probably saw that at some point he is going to get caught, the money's running out, well, what's going to happen? So I'm sharing this with you because I fully believe that there are powers behind our stories and that if this can help one woman out there who is dealing with financial abuse, physical abuse like my grandmother, verbal abuse because he constantly told her that she's nothing, that she's fat, she's ugly, but he was constantly putting her down. So she got abused in every, every way. If this can help just one woman, it's important to share the story. So if you need help, if you don't know a way out, contact me. DM me, message me, go to jessicaweaver.com. You can schedule a call. I'm here to help you. I'm here to be your advocate. And it is a completely safe place to talk to me. So if you are some, you know somebody who's dealing with abuse, especially during this month, it's Abuse Awareness Month in November. We're talking about the financial abuse, but in my family, we've had verbal, physical, and financial abuse happen. You can read the block and see there are multiple stories like this. We are here for you. We are here for you. And I will be praying for you and know that we are here to help you when you are ready to reach out for help. But even if you're thinking you might need help, you need help. So reach out to us. All right. God bless you.